Welcome, everybody, to Kicking It with Crowder, episode 30. It is Thursday, March 19th, 2020. Same show, just a new look today as I've teamed up with the Columbus Podcasting Group and Columbus Television. Uh, with the sports world on hold, sports fans tuned into the NFL and free agency this weekend uh, and, and Monday, uh, and boy, it took off, and it has been a wild few days uh, from the shocking DeAndre Hopkins trade uh, to the, Ryan H- Tannehill at, getting paid $30 million a year. Uh, there were some crazy dominoes falling, uh, but the biggest domino of them all guys and I was shocked when this happened Tom Brady after 20 years with the one franchise the New England Patriots six Super Bowls nine Super Bowl appearances uh, they just couldn't work it out him and Bill Belichick couldn't get on the same page uh, you know Robert Kraft wanted to keep Tom Brady but you know Tom Brady either didn't have the weapons around him he thought he could contend for a Super Bowl championship or him and Bill Belichick you know basically they just did not get a, get along very good and um Tom Brady has moved on now to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So uh, I know Tampa Bay, they're excited. Uh, last, last Yesterday they had 6,000 fans trying to go up there and get tickets. So uh, the Tom Brady factor, he'll spend at least two years in Tampa Bay. And right now the way he's playing, uh, he's playing, you know, good enough to stay in the NFL with his resume I think he could play you know three years I know he said he wanted to play till he's 45 um, but he lands with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin those two outside wide receivers uh, 2,000 yard receivers last year um, Jameis Winston I mean this team was in a lot of ball games last year but Jameis Winston could not uh, could not hold on to the ball kept turning the ball over so uh, Tom Brady signs with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, will be weird to see number 12 in a Bucks uniform uh, and not a Patriots uniform. I kind of wanted to see him end his career with the Patriots, but um, Bill Belichick had other plans. So six Super Bowls, nine appearances. Um, He joins the likes of Johnny Unitas, Joe Namath, and uh, Hall of Fame quarterback uh, Joe Montana as uh, quarterbacks to lead one franchise uh, for many years and then finish with another team. So Tom Brady is now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So guys, if you're following on the live, I just want to say uh, Tom Brady, you know, changing teams, it's, it's going to be weird to see him in the NFC South. Uh, you know, the Falcons have that connection to Tom Brady losing the 28-3 to uh, game in the Super Bowl. So now they'll have to face him twice a year. So uh, very, very... Uh, Very exciting stuff coming out of Tampa Bay. So uh, breaking news also coming out today. Uh, Todd Gurley uh, has been cut from the Los Angeles Rams right before he was uh, supposed to receive a $10.5 million bonus. So uh, Todd Gurley now, and they always say, you know, honor your contract if you're a player. Well, uh, the team certainly don't honor their contracts. And, uh, you know, Todd Gurley did make some money. I think, you know, $40 million guaranteed off that contract. So he did get paid, but it's always tough to see guys like him who have produced. Uh, and get cut and now uh, he's looking for a new home and possibly the Atlanta Falcons guys would be a good fit for Todd Gurley now that the contract situation is behind him uh, maybe we can get him at eight to ten million dollars per year uh, with some incentives and things like that so Todd Gurley uh, will be looked at by teams such as the Miami Dolphins possibly Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, Atlanta Falcons and things like that so uh, Todd Gurley guys uh, the 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 former Georgia Bulldog is now uh, uh, a free agent. So I want to talk a little bit about the quarterback dominoes that's happened. So uh, basically, Ryan Tannehill was the first peg to fall in the quarterbacks. Uh, a lot of people thought uh, the Tennessee Titans had a chance at Tom Brady, but uh, it has actually gone uh, to Ryan Tannehill with the four-year $118 million deal. Uh, came over as the backup uh, this this past year from the Miami Dolphins, and now he has taken off and uh, turned his you know nine or ten games he played this year into $118 million. Uh, and then uh, instead of paying Derrick Henry, they've actually now uh, franchise tagged Derrick Henry. So uh, D- Ryan Tannehill was paid by the uh, Tennessee Titans. Dak Prescott was tagged by the um, Dallas Cowboys. Phillip Rivers has signed a one-year deal, uh, $25 million with the Indianapolis Colts. Teddy Bridgewater has signed a three-year deal, $63 million deal with the Panthers. And then also to, uh, today, I'm sorry, yesterday, the Chicago Bears traded for Nick Foles, uh, quarterback, and they gave up a fourth-round pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Drew Brees re-signs with the Saints. Marcus Mariota signs with the Oakland Raiders to compete uh, and bring him in with uh, Derek Carr. So a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff going on right there. Uh, Andy Dalton. Quarterbacks such as Andy Dalton, uh, also Jameis Winston, and Cam Newton are kind of um, the odd men out right now in a quarterback market that has kind of shrunk up a lot. Uh, so I really, really don't know where Cam Newton will land. I, I, 
I've heard, you know, Los Angeles Chargers and Tyrod Taylor, supposedly their starter. You should, you, they could, um, they could go look at a uh, quarterback in the draft. So um, Cam Newton, where will he play? I've heard New England. Uh, Jameis Winston, you've heard New England for them. But my favorite fit for Jameis Winston uh, is the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Go in, back up Big Big Ben this next year. Um, in an offense that Jameis Winston would thrive in, throwing the ball deep down the field, uh, if they can just control his turnovers, Jameis Winston could be a heck of a quarterback in this league. Uh, he's one of the top free agents left uh, right now. And then, of course, Cam Newton is seeking a trade from the Carolina Panthers. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on in the NFL. Uh, the quarterback market has kind of hit a dry spell right now, so we'll see where everyone goes uh, in the next few weeks or months. Uh, could Cam Newton kind of, you know, just stay in shape and, you know, maybe a, a injury happens in camp and him come in? That could, that could be a possibility. Um, so there were a lot of free agent signings uh, as well as players tagged, and uh, I will start off with the players who were tagged this past weekend. Uh, so you have Dak Prescott leading the way, Yankee Ngakwe, from the Jacksonville Jaguars defensive end. Uh, players, so basically when you're tag guys, if you do not know what franchise tags and transition tags mean, uh, if you're franchise, you are just... Um, you're basically you can only negotiate with your team, uh, but also you can your agent can work out trades for for other places and work out deals and things like that. So Dak Prescott was um, tagged by the Dallas Cowboys, and they went ahead and signed Amari Cooper to a five-year, hundred million dollar contract. Uh, Brandon Shreve from the a guard from the Redskins was tagged. Chris Jones, defensive tackle from Kansas City, was tagged. Uh, also Shaq Barrett, Tampa Bay, was tagged. Hunter Henry, the tight end um, from the Los Angeles Chargers, was tagged. A.J. Green from the Cincinnati Bengals was tagged. Uh, Derrick Henry, running back from the uh, Tennessee Titans, was tagged. Matthew Judon, defensive end from the Baltimore Ravens, and also Bud Dupree from the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. So basically, all these guys have been tagged by their teams. They will make top five at their position next year if they do not sign a new contract. So you can still negotiate a new contract, uh, but that's basically why Dak Prescott turned down uh, the $30 million deal that um, – that uh, Dallas offered uh, because he's already going to be getting tagged and he's going to be making $30 million this year. So that's why his his camp wants closer to $33 million a year. Uh, you've heard close to $40 million deal uh, on that for Dak Prescott. So uh, Dak Prescott, will, will the Dallas Cowboys just franchise him and possibly let him walk next year? Uh, similar to what Washington did with Kirk Cousins for a few years, tagged him and then uh, did not want to pay him and let him walk. So um, – Franchise tags, it sucks for NFL guys who have been, you know, Dak Prescott's on a rookie deal. He's made, you know, barely, uh, I would say he's made close to two, a little over $2 million playing football the last four years for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, he does make a lot in endorsements and things like that, uh, but Dak Prescott deserves to be paid uh, like a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, and I believe that Jerry Jones will ultimately have to pay uh, Dak Prescott. Um, so notable players um, who are paid, uh, his teammate, Amore Cooper, I just mentioned it earlier, a five-year, $100 million deal for a wide receiver. Uh, I remember Larry Fitzgerald getting paid and breaking the mold uh, for wide receivers 10 years ago. He got a $40 million contract. So now the wide receiver market has doubled. So it's kind of gone from a running back league to a wide rec quarterback uh, wide receiver league. And um, I'm really, really excited to see Amari Cooper in this Dallas offense next year with Zeke Elliott and Dak Prescott and some other weapons they have. So uh, Austin Hooper, the former Atlanta Falcon, was released. Uh, I'm sorry, he was not released by the um, Falcons. The the Falcons could have franchised him, decided not to franchise him, and uh, Austin Hooper now is the highest paid tight end in the NFL, in the NFL with a four year, forty four million dollar deal uh, to leave the Atlanta Falcons and go to the Cleveland Browns. So uh, congratulations to Austin Hooper, you got paid, you did your thing, man, for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, caught a Super Bowl touchdown for Matt Ryan. Uh, so Austin Hooper, best uh, best of luck to you. I understand you had to go get paid, you had to make your money, man, and. Uh, I salute you. Uh, next is Eric Armstead, the defensive end from the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, they actually gave him a five-year, $117 million deal uh, to stay with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Byron Jones leaves the Cowboys. There just wasn't enough money to go around uh, in Dallas. Uh, they've already paid Elliott. They've paid, they're going to have to pay Prescott. They paid Cooper. They just could not pay Byron Jones, the cornerback from uh, the Dallas Cowboys. He leaves uh, and now is the richest cornerback in the league uh, five years 82 million dollars to leave uh, the Dallas Cowboys and go to the Miami Dolphins so now the Miami Dolphins have number one
one and number two corners uh, paid wise in the NFL. So look for maybe um, Xavier Howard to be cut. Possibly I've heard his name. Uh, he's he's a cap casualty, so he could get cut uh, from the Dolphins. But they do sign Byron Jones. Five years, $82 million. Uh, Dante Fowler, Falcons fans. Uh, Dante Fowler, he, a lot of uh, SEC people, Florida fans are familiar with him. He played at the University of Florida. And he uh, he he started off as a Jacksonville Jaguar, was traded to the Los Angeles Rams. Actually had three sacks against Matt Ryan last year in the Dome. Uh, so uh, he signs a three-year, $48 million deal with the Atlanta Falcons. And I have a lot more on the Atlanta Falcons coming up later. Key additions, uh, losses and what uh, other free agents we have and also what we may do in the NFL draft coming up very last of the show. So stay tuned to that, guys. Uh, other guys, such as Corey Littleton, the Los Angeles uh, Rams uh, linebacker, has signed with the Oakland Raiders, three-year, $36 million deal. Robert Quinn, uh, defensive end, uh, had 11 and a half sacks for the Dallas Cowboys last year. He has signed a five-year, $70 million deal with the um with the Bears. So they paid him a lot of money. Jack Conklin, three-year deal, $42 million uh, to go uh, protect Baker Mayfield uh, and play for the Cleveland Browns. Also, Chris Harris, two years, $17 million to, uh, to go to division rival from the Broncos to the, the Chargers, uh, three, uh, two years, $17 million. And Gerald McCoy uh, signs a three-year contract uh, with the Dallas Cowboys to play defensive tackle, three years, $18 million. So those are some of the biggest deals that happened, guys. Uh, what's the biggest deal? that you saw guys if you're following along uh so i am on i am on facebook what's up brandon uh what's up jordan uh so guys i'm just following along on facebook right here giving us some people some shout outs eli collins holly thank you guys for watching uh if you are following live right now do not forget to comment like share down below let me know what you guys want to talk about today uh what's the biggest shocker that's happened so far in free agency uh i would have to say uh that it, it was deandre hopkins uh one of the top five receivers in the nfl getting traded for a ham sandwich and a bag of chips uh honestly he um he is a, a far, far better player than what he got traded for. He should have been on the trading block for two first-round picks, nothing less. Uh, but the Arizona Cardinals get DeAndre Hopkins and a 20 24th round pick uh, to the Texans for David Johnson and his terrible contract. So not only does Bill O'Brien trade their best player on offense besides Deshaun Watson, they now take on David Johnson's horrible contract, $13 million a year as a running back. Uh, you're getting hit every play. He had his spot taken last year from Kenyon Drake uh, midseason. So uh, David Johnson, I hope you still have a little bit in the tank and certainly Bill O'Brien uh, hopes you have something in the tank. Uh, but that was just a boneheaded trade. Uh, if I'm if if you want to trade him, Bill O'Brien should have came out and said, hey, I want two first-round picks for DeAndre Hopkins. You let the entire league know, and you take nothing less. Uh, if not, you play under your contract that you have right now. So I did not like, I did not like that move uh, from the Texans. Uh, breaking news right now, uh, not football related, but uh, Chris Sell will have Tommy John surgery. So we got a little bit of breaking news baseball wise coming in right now. All right. So Bill O'Brien was definitely the most hated man in Houston. Uh, I'm really not sure why he is the GM. He hasn't really proved it as a coach. He's had uh, four playoff appearances in six seasons. Also, uh, coat tailed off of Bill Belichick and the and Tom Brady and the Patriots as well. So uh, went to Penn State, wasn't very successful there. Then got an NFL job. Now all of a sudden he's the GM for the Texans and and he's going to go ahead and trade their best player, like I said, for about a ham sandwich, uh, as Shannon Sharp said the other day on uh, on Fox Sports. So uh, also another big trade that happened and including another wide receiver and this was kind of writing on was on the wall uh stefan diggs did not uh, gel with kurt cousins he wanted to get out of there um he was tweeting about it he just said it's time for a fresh start well the buffalo bills gave him that fresh start they trade four draft picks guys they trade a first round 2020 pick which is going to be the number 22 overall pick now for minnesota and if you recall, Stephon Diggs was a fifth-round draft pick, so uh, some good compensation for that. Uh, also, they get a fifth and a sixth-round pick this year and a 2021 fourth-round pick for Stephon Diggs. So Stephon Diggs isn't even near as, as good as DeAndre Hopkins, but yet he gets there's four draft picks uh, traded for him. So uh, Bill O'Brien just either did not know his market or just doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Uh, so Bill O'Brien, man, um, you were the donkey of the day uh, this past week, and I'm really, really uh, 
I'm really, really concerned about your GM. Um, maybe you need to bring me on. Uh, you need to bring somebody on, and you need some help because I wouldn't have got anything less than two first-round picks for DeAndre Hopkins, guys. Uh, so some other trades that happen. The Baltimore Ravens, the rich just keep getting richer. They trade a fifth-round pick for Calais Campbell. Uh, they get him from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the Chicago Bears traded for Nick quarterback Nick Foles. They gave up a fourth-round pick. Um, so basically, man, Jacksonville is just rebuilding. Jacksonville is totally rebuilding, and they are um, they're just kind of re- they're hitting the refresh button. Uh, I feel bad for players like Leonard Fournette, veterans they have in uh, in Gakwe, uh, players like that who are, are having to sit through this. Man, it really really sucks. Um, so you also got uh, today, man, some big trade, and the Eagles and Detroit Lions have been talking for a while about this, but uh, the, today the Eagles trade a third round and a fifth round pick in the 2020 draft for quarterback Darius Slay. Uh, Darius Slay has been playing for the Lions for the past eight seasons, uh, so you may not know his name, but they call him Big Play Slay, and he is an absolute beast cornerback. I wanted the Atlanta Falcons to take a look at him, but uh, he goes to the Eagles. They give him a three-year, $50 million extension. So uh, the Eagles uh, kind of tighten up their secondary a little bit, and Darius Slay is very, very well respected around the league. Uh, he's going to do great things uh, for the Philadelphia secondary. So uh, Darius Slay, I know a lot of people in Detroit were sad to see you go, and um, and uh, I hope I hope the best for you. He is actually from Brunswick, Georgia, so a, a, Brun- a, a Georgia boy. I always root for the Georgia guys. Somehow they always get away from the University of Georgia, Georgia Tech, and things like that. He actually played his college ball at Mississippi State. So Denver trades Jarrell Casey, who is a Pro Bowl defensive tackle, and when you hear what they got back for him, they traded a seventh-round pick. Uh, the reason they did trade a seventh-round pick because – it's a $12 million cap penalty. So the the Denver Broncos will take that $12 million cap, and now the Tennessee Titans free up some cap space. So when you hear of trades like that, guys, where you have really, really good players, but they're you know getting traded for 5th, 6th, 7th round picks, normally that is the case. They're cap casualties, and they just have to make some cap space. Uh, the 49ers, uh, which I thought this was a really good trade for both sides, the 49ers traded DeForest Buckner to Indianapolis for the 13th overall pick, and they extend him and give him a $21 million contract. So basically, DeForest Buckner has been a very productive player for the uh, San Francisco 49ers, but what happened is they have players like George Kittle coming up, Nick Bosa, they just paid Eric Armstead, there's just not enough money to go around. So they figured, hey, I'm going to go ahead and turn around and get a first-round pick for DeForest Buckner. Not only do you get a first-round pick, you get the 13th overall pick in the draft, you just loss in the Super Bowl you also have the 31st overall pick and the 49ers don't have a second third or fourth round pick so look for the 49ers to trade one of those picks uh, and to gain some more draft capital possibly trading a first for maybe a third and a fourth a second and a fourth something like that uh, to kind of get some more uh, players in that 49er system the 49ers guys they're very very close Uh, they were right on the brink of winning the championship this year Uh, could not hold the lead in the fourth quarter again against the Kansas City Chiefs. So I'm really, really excited uh, to see who the 49ers pick. Look for the 49ers to dress the wide receiver position. Uh, Last year they drafted Debo Samuel. Uh, They also had Emmanuel Sanders. I'm not sure if they'll re-sign Emmanuel Sanders or not. But look for CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy, one of these type receivers, Henry Ruggs, one of these speedsters uh, to maybe latch on with the 49ers and to develop a chemistry uh, with Jimmy Garoppolo. So uh, also... Uh, and not, last but not least, the Atlanta Falcons, trade-wise, uh, they they lost Austin Hooper to the Cleveland Browns, and not long after that, they actually got Hayden Hurst uh, from bu- from the Baltimore Ravens, who was a first-round draft pick out of the University of South Carolina in 2018. Uh, they they give up the a second-round pick from the Patriots, and also a, f- a fifth-round pick uh, for Hayden Hurst and a. Uh, fourth round pick so we trade the pick we we traded Sanu to the Patriots for a second round pick we use that second round pick to trade for Hayden Hurst and then uh, we also trade basically a fourth we get a fourth rounder for a fifth rounder in return Uh, not a bad trade Uh, I I really really like Hayden Hurst's skill set he's a run after he's a um, 
run after the catch kind of guy. Uh, once he gets the ball in his hands, he's a speedster. He can break tackles. Uh, he's all he's a, he can also block. I wouldn't be surprised if the Falcons, uh, you know, got another uh, blocking tight end. You know, Tololo left and he went to the Dolphins. Uh, he he's left and and went to another team. So um, Hayden Hurst, I really like the pickup. You got a two year. Uh, you got two years left on his deal with a fifth year option. So we could possibly see him uh, for the next three years playing on his rookie deal. So I like that move uh, from the Atlanta Falcons. So uh, with all these moves happening right now, guys, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the free agents still available. There's still a lot of good players left. Uh, players such as Todd Gurley, who just got released, uh, Melvin Gordon, and uh, I'm going to rank my top 10 guys. Uh, I'm actually going to put Todd Gurley into this because I actually, when I made my top 10, Ty Gurley wasn't even released yet. So I will add him into my top 10. Uh, so I'll have my top 11 players uh, coming in uh, who are free agents right now available on the open market. Uh, so a lot of teams, they can't pay, you know, I wish the Atlanta Falcons could go after all these guys, but there's just not enough cap space. There's not enough time uh, to sign these guys. And uh, so basically I'm going to start my list from number 11 down to one of the top free agents, free agents who are still available right now. So, Coming in at number 11 is a for, another former Georgia high school football player, Von Bell, who actually played at Ohio State. He is a safety uh, for the New Orleans Saints. He is now a free agent. He is my number 11 uh, uh, left uh, free agent. So I like Von Bell a lot. He's more of a strong safety, uh, can cover and things like that, but he likes to come up and hit you. Uh, so look for Von Bell to to um, to. As soon as the safety market, and he may have to sign after uh, the NFL draft and things like that. So once the safety market kind of hits its uh, hits its highest ceiling, uh, that's when he will he will be uh, going out. Uh, next is uh, defensive end Shelby Harris. Uh, he is my number 10 overall uh, free agent available. Also uh, coming in at number 9, Emmanuel Sanders, wide receiver from the 49ers. A lot of people thought that... Uh, a lot of people thought that Emmanuel Sanders would re-sign with the 49ers. He has not as of yet. Uh, so right now, he's my number nine overall player. So we got some people watching, some people commenting down below. Uh, got TJ, uh, Hector, thanks for watching, Jake. Uh, Bill Bill says Bill O'Brien, Clowney last year. Yeah, so Bill, he actually traded Clowney. He traded um, – he not only traded Clowney, he traded Hopkins, didn't get a first-round pick for either of them. What a – what a joke, man. He's a clown. I do not like Bill O'Brien. Uh, what's up, Kevin? Yeah, I know. He gets to beat him twice a year. I, I like the Falcons' chances against the Buccaneers, man. I'll take it. Uh, so continuing with my list, guys, I just wanted to shout out some people on live. Don't forget, uh, if you're watching, comment, like, share down below. Let more people see this. And then tomorrow I will drop our, our edited cut of all this, okay? Uh, so coming in at number eight, another wide receiver, a firmer, former first-round pick, uh, he played at UCF. He also played for the Baltimore Ravens. Rashad Perryman uh, finished the year last year with Tampa Bay. Uh, so he's a very, very good uh, receiver. Kind of took him a few years to get going. Uh, but he is a, a guy who can make plays and could be a good possible number three receiver for some teams. Uh, coming in at number seven, uh, safety HaHa Clinton Dix, uh, the, uh, the the former University of Alabama uh, star safety. Uh, he is on the open market after playing last year with the Chicago Bears. So uh, look for some teams, you know, possibly the Atlanta Falcons, uh, to sign a HaHa Clinton Dix, someone uh, who can be a third safety, who can come in and play special teams and things like that. So coming in at number six, guys, a guy who had who has had double-digit sacks uh, three out of the past four seasons, Everson Griffin, the defensive end for Minnesota Vikings. Uh, he is a very, very good player. Had some mental health issues last season, uh, but came on strong this year. Actually voided his contract, had three years left on it, voided it. Uh, he was getting paid $10 million a season, so you look for him to at least make that. Uh, probably wants to make closer to 12 to $14 million per year. Uh, but Everson Griffin is a guy guy who can come in, get you eight to ten sacks, and uh, really come in on second and third down situations uh, to stop the run. All right. Uh, what's up, Goose? All right. So uh, my top five guys, my top five players who are the top free agents remaining. I got Roby and Robbie Anderson, the wide receiver from the, the New York Jets. Uh, he is still on the market. He wants kind of receiver one money. I think he's more of a, a wide receiver number two. Uh, so I don't think he'll cash in uh, quite as much as Julio Jones and players like that, but he'll get a nice little contract. Uh, Robbie, and Robbie Anderson has made some plays uh, for the New York Jets and has done well. Oh, uh, what's up, Josh? 
Uh, coming in at number four, uh, I have Jameis Winston coming in at number four as the top uh, free agents who are, are still available. Uh, he's a quarterback for the, he was a quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I do not expect him to come back uh, and back up Tom Brady. Uh, his market's kind of dried up here in the last 48 hours. Uh, look for teams. My best fit for Jameis Winston personally, the way uh, he forces the ball downfield, could come in and sit behind a veteran such as Big Ben. My favorite spot for Jameis Winston to land is the Pittsburgh Steelers with Mike Tomlin with a good foundation. I think that uh, he could sit a year and then possibly take over uh, next year and maybe just get a chance. Maybe if Big Big Ben does not finish the season next year, maybe Jameis Winston can slide on in. So that is my spot for him, but also look to New England, uh, possibly the Jacksonville Jaguars for Jameis Winston. Coming in at number three, Melvin Gordon. Uh, Melvin Gordon, man, did not take a uh, $10 million, You know, He had a contract offer last year of, of multiple years of 10 $10 million dollars uh, did not take it from the Los Angeles Chargers. Thought he was a little bit better. And you talk about someone's market who has dried up the running back market right now, uh, especially with Todd Gurley now hitting the market. Um, you know, it's kind of at a standstill. And there's five or six really good running backs in this draft class. So I'm not sure what will happen uh, with players such as Melvin Gordon. I thought the Atlanta Falcons were going to be interested in Melvin. Uh, he is. Uh, that we're not going to go that direction. Uh, I would like the Atlanta Falcons to make a run at my number two overall player, uh, Todd Gurley. I, you know, just released. I have him at my number as my number two overall player. Still, just 25 years old. Todd Gurley. He's been around for a long time. A lot of people remember him from Georgia and the SEC. But uh, he's actually been in the NFL for six seasons now. Um, so Todd Gurley, he's got some mileage left on the tank. Uh, some some mileage left in the tank, I believe. He is coming off an arth- arthritic knee, uh, but you know his workload the last two seasons has definitely gone down. So uh, if he can catch on to a team with a nice potent offense, uh, get some red zone carries, have over 10 touchdowns next year, maybe 800 yards, maybe he can hit free agency one more time and have that one last contract. Uh, and my number one overall player, and I'm kind of shocked that he's still available, uh, Jadavion Clowney. Uh, Jadavion Clowney, the former South Carolina, uh, the former number one overall pick from the Houston Texans, uh, he wants $21 million per season, and uh, that's why he has not been signed yet. Uh, there were rumors that uh, there were rumors actually that he was going to go to the uh, New York Giants on a four-year, $87 million uh, deal that dried up. They, he has not signed with anybody currently. Uh, look for teams such as the Giants, uh, teams with a lot of cap space, um, I know the the Giants are kind of the only team linked to him right now. Um, I've heard, you know, he could go back to Seattle maybe on a one-year deal. Um, So look for teams as the Seahawks, the Giants, and possibly, you know, teams who are spending a lot of money right now. Um, I don't think the Dolphins, he'll go to the Dolphins or anything like like that. But look for the Giants or also a return from the Seahawks for Jadavion Clowney. Can play outside linebacker, can also play uh, defensive end. Uh, He's only had 35 career sacks in six seasons, so that's kind of shocking when you hear that stat. But uh, a couple years ago, he did have over 10 10 sacks. So uh, Jadavion Clowney is my number one guy, just pure talent alone. Uh, he is a freak athlete, and uh, he can be a great addition to any of these teams. So I uh, want to talk a little bit about my winners and my losers of the uh, free agency, and I'll start with my winners first. Uh, I, I got to give it to the Buffalo Bills. They've, uh, they have signed. Uh, not only did they trade for Stephon Diggs and get the weapon that Josh Allen needs, uh, they also signed players such as Mario Addison. Uh, they have also signed uh, – I got it all right here – uh, they've signed Vernon Butler, the defensive tackle, former defensive tackle. Also, Josh Norman. So they go get uh, Josh Allen a new toy and Stephon Diggs. Uh, they give up some some draft picks for him, but hey, uh, he is a great player coming off of 1,200 yards, uh, five touchdowns p- this past year. So I really look for Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen to mesh well uh, this next coming season. Uh, coming in at number two, uh, the Cleveland Browns. And, you know, every year they kind of say the Cleveland Browns – had kind of uh, killed the uh, off season, and uh, this year they have actually signed uh, Jake Conklin, the offensive tackle. Gave him three years, forty-two million dollars. Also, they signed Austin Hooper to a four-year, forty-four million dollar contract, and they also uh, have a second-round tender on Kareem Hunt. They signed Carl Joseph, and they get Case Keenum, who was in their their head coach's system last year, uh, so he can come around and uh, Baker and kind of. Uh, help him understand the nuances of that playbook and kind of be that veteran uh, in the in the quarterback 
uh, room. So I like what the Browns have done. I also like what the Buffalo Bills have done. But, man, the big winner of free agency so far, uh, Arizona Cardinals. Cliff Kingsbury uh, went and got his uh, quarterback, Kyler Murray, a shiny new toy, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, and they only have to give up David Johnson and a second and fourth round pick. Are you kidding me? I, I can't express this enough. DeAndre Hopkins was worth way more than that. Bill O'Brien, I'm sorry, man. I hope you're listening. You need to get it together, Bill. I, I'm really concerned about you staying in the NFL. Um, you, you seem more like a coordinator to me, but now you're the GM of the Houston Texans. You look like you got a blindfold on, Bill. Get it together, man. Uh, so the Arizona Cardinals are the big winners here. They get DeAndre Hopkins. They also sign uh, Devon Kennard, the former Detroit Lion. Also signed Jordan Phillips, defensive tackle from uh, Buffalo. They they franchise uh, Kenyon Drake, and they also just signed De- Devondre Campbell, the former the former Atlanta Falcon, to a one-year $8.5 million deal as well. So those are my three winners. Some other teams you can say won. Tampa Bay definitely won. Um, not only, you know, getting tickets and people excited about Tampa Bay uh, football, but Tampa Bay, you know, Tom Brady gets to work with Bruce Arians, who has worked with the likes of Andrew Luck, Ben Roethlisberger, Peyton Manning. Um, so he will get the best out of Tom Brady. That is That has no doubt. And Tom Brady's never had, hasn't had these weapons in a very, very long time. Uh, Mike Evans is the best receiver he's played with probably since Randy Moss. And also you got Chris Godwin in there, uh, two big receivers on the outside who both coming off 1,000 uh, years. So Tampa Bay won. And also uh, the Oakland Raiders. A lot of people aren't really talking about Oakland and what they've done. I'm sorry. Not even Oakland. I am sorry. The Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, So they have actually relocated to uh, Las Vegas. They are Oakland no more. So I'm sorry about that. They've signed uh, Eli Apple, Jeff Heath. They've also signed Corey Littleton, uh, Marcus Mariota, Carl Carl Nassib, and Jason Witten. So getting some some really good veteran leadership in that locker room. Uh, And I like the Marcus Mariota sighting. mainly because Derek Carr did throw 70% last year, but you can always push your quarterback and get another quarterback who is a a competitor who can get in that locker room and learn the offense and kind of lead just in case something happens uh, to Derek Carr. So Marcus Mariota, I really like the signing by Mike Mayock and John Gruden. Uh, So really, really exciting stuff coming out of Oakland. So my biggest loser is a free agency, and it it shouldn't shock you uh, who my number one uh, biggest loser of the free agency. First off, it's got to be Bill O'Brien. And then at second off, it's got to be the Houston Texans. Uh, you have your receiver who can grow with Deshaun Watson. He is a top three receiver in the league. He's on a great contract, three years, $40 million deal. Yes, he wanted to re- restructure his contract. Well, you know, you tell him you play this season, and if he goes out there and balls out, then you give him his 15 to $18 million a year. You got to make relationships work with your best players, okay? Uh, Bill O'Brien has ran a lot of people out of town uh, in Houston, Jadavion Clowney and things like that. So, uh, And Bill O'Brien, you know, it said there was a rift between him and DeAndre Hopkins. I'm sorry, man. You got to make your relationships work with your best players. Maybe it's not them. Maybe it is uh, you, Bill. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're the problem. Maybe you're a little bit in over your head. So um, the Bears are my number two loser uh, in the free agency, and that is because now they did get Nick Foles, uh, but honestly, they already have Mitchell Trubisky. You're keeping him, uh, so you're going to, if Mitchell Trubisky's now looking behind, over his shoulder the whole time at Nick Foles, uh, then you you sign Robert Quinn to a five-year $70 million deal. I thought they overpaid for him. And they also give Jimmy Graham, who just keeps making money in the NFL, didn't really do much last year for the Packers. They signed him to a two-year, $16 million deal. So uh, it's not, I like the, the Nick Foles move, bring in the leadership, but also I don't like it because of Trubisky. Also, I think they gave out a little bit too too much money to those two guys. And then my, my, my number three loser from the free agency Got to be uh, New England Patriots, Bill Belichick, uh, losing Tom Brady, uh, losing the core, the backbone of your football team. Um, I'm sorry. I, you just got to make it work with Tom Brady. You got to give him what he wants. Uh, he's always taken pay cuts the last few years. So 
I really think that they should have done what they had to do to keep Tom Brady. Uh, now you have to see Tom Brady in a Tampa Bay Buccaneers uniform, and and that's just going to be weird. It, it is going to be weird uh, seeing the 12 uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and not on the New England Patriots. So those are my three. Uh, those are my three losers right there. Uh, so my winners, guys, if you're just joining on the live, the Bills, the Browns, and the Cardinals. And my losers, the Texans, the Bears, and the Patriots. So uh, Atlanta Falcons fans, a lot to talk about here. And, and uh, if you if you have anything to, that you want to talk about, if you are following along live right now, let me know what you want to talk about. Uh, this uh, episode, I am brought to you down here at the Columbus Podcasting Studios and Columbus Television. So I just want to say thank you uh, to them for letting me come down here, uh, film this today. Uh, we have my Kicking It With Crowder logo up here right now. And, uh, man, it's been a fun episode. I really enjoy it. Um, uh, bringing this show to you every week, guys, and we will continue to work with Columbus Television and Columbus Podcasting. So um, I will have at least you know a couple more episodes with them, and we'll see how it goes. We'll put our edited version out tomorrow, so be looking, be sure to uh, check out my Kicking It with Crowder page, uh, and uh, you can find all that information there tomorrow. So uh, Kicking It with Crowder, guys. I am on Apple. I am on Spotify. I am on the iHeart radio app. You can also find me on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Kick It With Crow. So the Atlanta Falcons, guys, uh, they had some key losses in, in free agency. Devontae Freeman, a running back who you know really gave his all to the Atlanta Falcons, ran hard every single time he got the football. Um, as soon as we paid him, you know, his productivity just kind of declined. And uh, we had we had to, to cut Devontae Freeman. Also, we had to cut De- Desmond Trufant, who I had, I've always thought has been a good cornerback, not a great cornerback. He's not a number one corner to me. He's more of a number two guy. Now we have two young guys, Oliver and Sheffield. Um, I'm hoping we sign a free agent such as Jimmy Smith. Um, we missed out on Don- Dasquez Denard. Uh, he signed for like three years, eight, $8 million. That would have been a good veteran to bring in. Uh, so we really need to bring in some veteran, either a veteran defensive lineman on a great uh, deal or another cornerback for sure. So we lose Desmond Trufant. We lose Devontae Freeman. Devondre Campbell, I told you guys, has signed with the Arizona Cardinals, so we lose him as well. Um, but some key additions. We did sign Dante Fowler Jr., uh, the former number three overall pick out of the University of Florida. Uh, and we also trade for Hayden Hurts, a tight end out of South Carolina. We have also re-signed Tyler Davison, the defensive tackle. So that's what the Atlanta Falcons have done so far. Uh, look for moves such as Jimmy Smith, a running back, Todd Gurley, uh, Jim, uh Players like that, a safety, haha, Clinton Dix. If we can get these guys uh, for the right price on one year deals, uh, I really, really think that will help the Atlanta Falcons build some depth. And let, uh, let and Dan Quinn has kind of handed over the defensive duties. Um, so I want to see what they do. Um, the defense is obviously led up front um, by Grady Jarrett and also uh, Debo, uh, I'm sorry, Jones, uh, Deion Jones. So uh, those two guys right there, the great leaders right in the middle of your defense. But uh, I would love to see them draft possibly a cornerback out of Florida, C.J. Henderson. Look out for that name. Uh, they've also been been tied to uh, Chase On from LSU, the outside linebacker. So two guys uh, you could look at. And then if we don't address the running back, um, we don't address the running back room uh, in free agency, we could always look to draft a running back, say, second or third round. Uh, look for players such as Antoine Winfield, safety from Minnesota, uh, to be in play in the second round. Uh, don't think we'll go tight end now that we have Hayden Hurst. So, um, Thomas Dimitrov, Dan Quinn, the Atlanta Falcons, we need results, uh, and you got to make something shake in the NFL draft. I uh, don't really like moving up in the draft and giving up some of that draft capital. We have a first. We have a second. Uh, I think we uh, we have two fourths, a third. So I, I like staying put where we are uh, and seeing what we can do from there, guys. So um, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, the draft is a little bit uh, a month a month away. So uh, look out for the Atlanta Falcons to draft deep, go defensive. Uh, if they do draft a guy in the second or third round, offensively look for it to be a running back, kind of address the offensive line last year. So uh, any guy, anything you guys want to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, I have really, really enjoyed the show. I'm going to go to a question. What's up, Kane? Uh, what's up, Mom? Goose? Josh? Uh, yeah, so 
Um, basically, the running backs have kind of taken the biggest hit so far in free agency. Uh, once one domino falls, and Todd Gurley will probably be the first. Like I said, teams to look out for Todd Gurley, Miami, Atlanta, also possibly the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, uh, guys, I've really, really enjoyed bringing you this show today. Uh, don't forget where you can find all my stuff. I am on Apple. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. I'm trying to dib, uh, dibble and dabble into everything I can. And um, I really, really enjoy bringing you this show every week. So I'll be uh, filming uh, here in this uh, studio with Columbus Television and the Columbus Podcasting Community. So, guys, I just want to let you know, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your likes, for all your shares. I could not do this show without you. I am proud to bring you this show every week. You've been kicking it with Crowder, and I will catch you guys next week. I am out. See you guys.